Despite the explosive advances in digital technology, film is still with us, and it's made a big comeback in recent years. Rather like vinyl, I guess. Suddenly people are interested in film once again, and labs are investing in new enlargers, more community dark rooms are popping up, the price of used analogue cameras is on the rise, film sales are booming. So in this video, we're going to look at some of the reasons why you, as a street photographer, should shoot film. Hello Street Snappers, and welcome to my latest street photography video. August has been a massively busy month for me, which is why it's been at least four weeks since my last video. I've been running documentary workshops, I've been working on a new workshop product for Venice, uh, details coming soon on that, uh, and I've been getting my, my latest book off the starting blocks, which is 52 Assignments Black and White Photography. And again, this is published by Ammonite Press, and I'll pop a link below. I think we're, we're now taking pre-orders, and it should be on the shelves in October. So let's talk about analogue shooting, and if you're still in possession of a film camera, then you're in luck. If you're not, you're still in luck. There are plenty of them around, and you can find them for sale in camera shops, car boot sales, uh, charity shops, and of course, places like eBay. Whether it's medium format, uh, roll film or 35mm, colour or black and white, it doesn't really matter. Just buy some of this lovely stuff, load it up and shoot some street photography, and you'll be in for a real treat. So here are 12 good reasons to shoot film on the streets. I know there are more, but I did want to keep this video fairly brief. Firstly, celebrate slow art. Shooting with film really does slow you down and makes you think more about what you're shooting. You'll pay more attention to the composition and to exposure and to focusing. So relish this slower pace and, and really think about your art. You get a real sense that you're, you're creating something that's just a little bit more special every time you press that button. Secondly, rather like learning theory and music, Analog photography will help you better understand the technical aspects of your camera and photography generally. If you understand how emulsion reacts to the light, if you understand how a darkroom works, if you get to grips with the, the nuances of, of different film stocks and speeds, all this is going to really help your development as a photographer and it will pay dividends in your digital life. Yes, all this will help you, you as a digital photographer because it'll make you think more critically about how you capture, about what you capture. It'll make you think about the, the process for taking every single image. So it's a win on that front too. Thirdly, if you shoot only using film, your images will take on a, a consistent look. Uh, film shooters tend to find one type of film that they like and they stick with it. And this is one of the many things that can help you develop your own personal style. And that's something we should all be aiming to do. Fourthly, if you really get into film and do your own developing and printing, uh, your hobby takes on a whole new mean meaning and you learn a completely new skill set. And it becomes really absorbing, something completely different. It's a different ball game. And believe me, this really is addictive. Uh, you don't have to have your own uh, sophisticated darkroom. It's very easy just to develop your own pictures and you can do this in your bathroom just with a, a simple uh, developing tank and a thermometer and some measuring jugs and some chemicals. And what a lot of people do is just do their own developing at home uh, and then scan the negatives. So it takes you back into the digital process very easily. You don't need a darkroom with a sophisticated enlarger and all that stuff, although it's great if you have got the, the space and the money to do that. But you don't need that. You can just develop your own film and it's cheaper than sending, sending it to a lab. It's quicker and it's really quite exciting. So point number five is that you, you'll be more uh, thoughtful when you're shooting you'll be more conscious of your surroundings and more in the zone. You'll also be more discerning about what to shoot 
and you'll become more self-critical because I guess every shot costs you money. So you'll be using those brain cells much more. You can't afford to spray and pray as uh, some, some of us do in street photography. And if you shoot film, you won't uh, or you can't chimp all the time. And if you're not aware of it, chimping means looking at the, the shots on the back of your LCD screen as soon as you've taken them. This means you'll be able to concentrate on the here and now, absorbing yourself in the moment, which is surely what street photography is all about. Let's pause here and, and have a quick look at film cameras. You honestly don't need to spend loads of money to be able to do this well. And take this uh, Olympus Trip, for example. It's a real classic and it's a great introduction to analog photography. And you can pick these babies up on eBay for 30 or 40 pounds. Or maybe something like this Canon rangefinder. Uh, moving up a gear, you could get a very decent SLR, single lens, lens reflex in old money for less than 50 pounds. And that comes with a, usually comes with a 50 mil standard lens uh, or a nifty 50. Uh, cameras I'd be looking for in, uh, in, the, in the SLR range, you're probably gonna have to pay around 100, 150 pounds. But something like, uh, oh, let me think, something like an Olympus OM-1, a Pentax K1000, uh, an Olymp a Canon AE-1, a Nikon, Nikon FM, or for a bit more money, uh, something like this bulletproof Nikon F3. All these are just lovely machines. They'll serve you for a long time, and they give you a great platform to learn the art of analog photography. Then moving up another gear, you may want to think about medium format, roll film. So this medium format, we, we usually refer to 120 uh, roll film which gives you a much bigger negative and potentially way better quality. Uh, cameras have become more expensive in recent years because there's been a massive surge in popularity, but you can still get a, a twin lens reflex camera like this old Yashica mat for 100 pounds, uh, or something like a, a Roliflex for uh, probably four or five times that at least. And I've got to say, this is my all-time favourite camera by, uh, by a long chalk. Bronicas are another uh, good entry point for medium format photography, as is the bigger Mamiya 6x7. I love these. Uh, I own this Bronica uh, S2 recently, and it cost me 300 quid. And you can't argue with that. What a great way to get into medium format film photography. But there are just loads to choose from. And if you buy a medium format camera and decide it's not for you, or even a 35 mil camera, you will usually get your money back and more. These things are holding their value and they're going up in value. So let's get back to my, my uh, list of reasons to shoot film on the streets. And point number six is you won't obsess about gear as much as you do when you're shooting digital. Shooting film is a bit of a digital detox. There's no doubt that a, a 1960s Nikon or 70s Olympus is way cooler than the new four grand Sony digital camera. And you'll stop feeling this need to compete with everyone else. Who's got the most megapixels? Who's got the most sophisticated camera with all these facilities that we tend not to use very much anyway in street photography? Shooting with a film camera is just so liberating. So point number seven, getting film process, processed is, is easier than it has been for ages. And if you don't fancy doing it yourself and having a dark room, as we discussed earlier, there are loads of labs who will develop a film for you, send you an envelope with negatives, with prints if you want them, with a CD if you want it, with all the JPEGs, and this takes you back into the digital process if that's where you want to go. So try out several labs and find one that you enjoy working with, that does a good job at the right price, that's reliable, uh, that won't mess up your film. So shop around with labs uh, and you will find something that works for you. We looked at cameras earlier, so let's just press pause again and think about film for a minute. Film stock comes in all shapes, sizes and speeds and it's great to experiment. 
uh, you, you'll eventually find something that works for you. Personally, if I'm shooting medium format color film, I, I love this Portra uh, 400, which is just beautiful. It's fantastic for portraits. If I'm shooting medium format uh, black and white film, Ilford HP5 has long been a favorite of mine. Uh, if I'm shooting 35 mil, uh, I've been using this uh, Kodak Tri-X since God was a Lance Corporal, and I just love it. It's contrasty, it's quite harsh, uh, but it's got a lovely feel to it. Uh, and there's just all sorts you can buy. There's some Fujifilm stock here. There are companies like uh, Cosmo popping up, all sorts of new companies popping up, selling film, making film. And this is Russian stuff. It's quite interesting to use, it's different. So, I mean, film is in plentiful supply, so do shop around. Find what you like, find something that works for you, what you can afford, and there is something to for, for everyone out there. So back to the, the tips. And at number eight, we, we, we look at that the filmic look that people talk about. And prints made from film do have a look that digital can't seem to replicate. Digital images are often too perfect, too good. In fact, they're, they're so good that they're almost unrealistic sometimes. And you just don't get that with film, which often seems more natural, softer, more sympathetic. Uh, and one of the things about street photographers is that we, we seem to love nostalgia. And there's no better way to create nostalgic looking, evocative street shots than by using film. And we all look at those uh, evocative street images of, say, New York in the 60s or 70s and think, God, I wish I could do that now. Well, sadly, we can't, but at least we can go some way to creating a similar aesthetic by shooting on film. Uh, my next point is that the film is exciting. There's no instant gratification uh, that you get from digital. And the anticipation of waiting to see your work physically appear is a feeling like no other for the photographer. And when that envelope drops through your letterbox, it's like the anticipation of Christmas when you were a kid. Uh, or when you're in the darkroom, if you're lucky enough to have the use of a darkroom, you get your print in the, the tray of developer and you're rocking the tray, watching the print appear, and magically this image just appears from nowhere. It is so exciting. So finally, and I think this is a really beautiful point, everyone will love you. Walk down the street with a huge DSLR around your neck and you'll be public enemy number one. But when people see a film camera, they smile, they start to reminisce. Old cameras make people happy. I don't know why it is, but people will love you. You know, trust me on this, you walk down the street holding one of these and you will be lovable. So get yourself an old film camera. Commit to using it exclusively for, say, a couple of months. Be really disciplined and try not to be tempted to reach for anything digital, just to give film some space to mature in your mind and just let the, the way you shoot change and just see what happens. I think you'll relish the experience and you'll be producing stylish images that uh, you will just love to, to look at. And all, the, all this time, you'll be growing as a photographer. So I think that's it for today. Uh, I have lots more street photography videos in the pipeline. And once I get over this busy spell, you'll be hearing a lot more from me. So thanks as always for supporting this channel. I really do appreciate it. And as always, I'd love to see your comments below. Bye for now.